Oh, you're right, guys. It's the end of April already. Can't believe it. I've got a few more things in my little uh, small garden area. Got some carrots in, uh, white and coloured pak choy and some wong bok. Got some Faraday dwarf beans in. Different types of spring onions. And again, they're all mirrored. Now, interestingly, again, interestingly, the cheaper compost, uh, they're, they're germinating. The deer stuff, which was over twice the price, has no show. Uh, I've got a few squares left. We're going to have um, cut and come again lettuce at the front and celery in these two squares. Anyway, I digress. We're all about uh, microclimates this month. Now I've got my own built-in microclimate here. Here it is, a mesh lid. I put this down at night um, just to keep things a little bit warmer. It's a mesh so it stops the wind howling through, it breaks it up, just like a windbreak with bushes and things, you know? So it's pretty good because some of these tall plants will blow over. So that's good and it keeps a bit of heat in. It must add I think it probably adds four or five degrees Celsius to the temperature just by, you know, be, being a lid. But I'm not really here to talk about this little bit. I want to talk more about the microclimate where I live. And to do that, I'm going to go on the computer for a bit and uh, we'll come back in afterwards. OK, and to best set the scene for my explanation, we need to go back 50 years to 1973 from the days before I joined the Royal Navy. Oops, a bit too far. Here we are then, back on track. A couple of days before I joined the Navy. So I left school this week, 50 years ago, and I didn't join the Navy till September, so I needed a part-time job. I got a job at this garden centre, Severn Vale, and I lived here, and I took my trusty steed, my Poosh VZ50 moped, to work and back every day. God, I'd be worth a fortune now, that thing. And as I said, it was called Severn Vale, then taken over by Y Vale, and then latterly Dobbies. And that is the extent of the garden centre these days. Now, when I worked there, it wasn't a garden centre, it was more of a nursery. Things weren't imported, they were grown. There was no Edinburgh wool shop or potpourri or smelly candle section. I've tried to show how things have changed. The yellow area is the public access area with the car park. The green bit is the buildings, but the red area is the nursery itself where everything was grown. In this area, trees were brought on and down here where the uh, roses were budded and there were shrubs and lavender galore. And this is what brings me on to the main subject, the, the old budder. There's a geezer, I can't remember his name, but they called him the old budder. And his job was to bud the roses. He could do a few thousand a day, I'll tell you. And my job was to follow behind him and put the ties around the buds to protect them, you know. And as you do, we chatted as we moved along, you know. And he said to me, he said, young Steve, he says, um, don't believe all you read. <laughs> I mean, there was no internet in those days, you know, he's reading. Uh, don't, don't believe all you read about uh, planting and stuff like that. You've got to learn on your own because um, areas are different. And we have a unique climate here. I can't remember his exact words, but he said we were warmer. And I've never, ever seen that written out anywhere until Mags put a link on to American website. And it actually showed our area being warmer. Uh, let me show you. OK, so I live in the UK. Um, we're zooming in on the Bristol Channel and the River Severn. And I live halfway between Bristol and Gloucester, up the River Severn. Here we go. Don't know where the water's gone. <laughs> and across to Dursley. And I am somewhere there. There we are. That's my house. That is Shea Digwell. Here we are. All the, uh, the potatoes in the front garden. So here's a map showing the last frost dates in the UK. 
Um, pink at the top is a very rare frost and yellowish at the bottom right, uh, very late frosts. You can see most of the UK sort of pale yellows to greens. And if we zoom in a little bit, there's a couple of blue blobs in the centre there amongst the other pale blues. And there we are. And that little red blob is me. And I hope you can see that I'm in a last frost date, the 11th of March onwards. And yet, not half a mile from me, slightly higher up the hill sides of the valley, they are the 21st of March. And a little bit further out yet again, another 10 days, 1st of April. So even at such a small area, the microclimate is totally different. This is what I'm getting at. And I'm fortunate to live in a place where I can sow things just that little bit earlier than those around me. So I think that just shows that it's all down to your local area. It's no good me telling Jane, who lives a mile away, to do this because Dursley, where I live, is totally different. This is the plant zones. Uh, what am I? 9A. She's 9A. And yet my frost date is 10 days earlier to her. Well, I hope that all made sense, guys. You can see now that I've got a double whammy, so I've got the, uh, the protection from the cover. And I live in an area that's a little bit warmer than the surrounding three or four miles, so bonus. And this lets me get the peas out just that few weeks earlier. You know, some people are still sheltering their spring onions. Mine are out, you know. So that's it. I got a few more plantings this week and that'll be, um, yeah, it will be fully populated, yeah. Well, I'll see you in May, guys, when we're talking about what's coming out and what's going in. So there may be a few changes. Take care.